Hello Lolas, welcome back to my channel and I'm here to discuss another topic with you guys. Guys, if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and make sure you do so at this time and click the bell to be a part of the notification squad and girl, what? Give me a thumbs up. That was so fake and phony, I have to say so myself. Girl, what? <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, um, this is Dwayne by Claire Teller. He is the vinyl version and version. And <laughs> um, guys, I just have a question for you guys. Um, so we've talked about, you know, how we feel about the truly limited edition kits and the large kits and uh, editions and the open editions and we've talked about how we've briefly talked about how people a lot of the older collectors um really like to collect in rare form and true limited edition kits i will say that that i think the Dwayne's, the claire uh the gabby gills by claire teller the um Susu, the Natalie Blick, a lot of Natalie Blick kits are still um, limited to a certain number. And so far, I have not seen where Natalie Blick goes back and say, okay, I've decided to do a second edition. I wanted to know how you guys feel about that. Like, you buy this doll thinking that it's going to be only 500 of them, and then they say, you know what, I decided to do a second edition. Or, you know what, I'm going to run an open edition. Or, you know what, I'm going to do a whole silicone edition. Or vice versa. I'm going to do a silicone edition and then, oh, after those sell out, you know what, I'm going to do a vinyl edition of this. Be right back. Very life. So anyway, um, and so what I was saying is, is that, you know, the you think you're buying something limited and then later it becomes not so limited how does that make you feel as a collector i know that some collectors um that i've spoke with don't care they just are glad that they get the opportunity to get something that they missed out on but there's a lot of collectors that are not happy about it and i think m more so when also when it's like um uh, reborns and stuff vinyl kits and also when it's actual kit kits that you know artists are going to paint to sell because believe it or not the more limited it is the better the sales are for the the artist to be able to sell in a lot of cases because um well you know sometimes it's quicker for them to sell i should say that too because if it's limited the collector doesn't have the 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 chance to say oh you know what I'll just grab that later it's always going to be available or there's a million out there I'll get another one when it's very limited it's like oh gotta have that one but you know on the flip side it helps the collector a little bit because there was some time people were charging like extremely um high rates for certain kits you know like say for instance an artist charge normally charge for a kit that was you know not limited they would charge like six hundred dollars to paint it um but one that was limited in a smaller edition they would charge twelve hundred for it because it was limited so the collector kind of wins on that end to a certain extent but at the same time you're more likely to have the same doll as everybody else i've seen artists where they paint the same doll exactly the same way like same color same markings in the same places i mean so much to if you sit your doll next to the other collector you wouldn't be able to tell which one was yours and which one is theirs so and a lot of people that we can't make mix match the paint styles and all that has gone out the window there are artists that can do it to be honest so they can duplicate their own work so that that's gone out the window you know i know it's not going to be exactly the same yeah it might be a little off barely but you get what i'm saying so I just wonder, like, what do you guys think about that? And, you know, like, okay, um, let's take, for instance, there are editions where artists will come out and say, okay, there will be 30 of these and 30, there will be 30 silicone babies and um, 250 vinyl. Or I'm going to do a vinyl edition and a, and a 
silicone edition. I'm okay with that because I know that going in that there's going to be both vinyl and silicone. So if I go for the silicone, I know that there's also going to be a vinyl edition. For instance, like the Gabigils. I knew, you know, going in, um, she said she was doing the, the silicone and the vinyl. So as a collector, I knew when I was getting it that it would be both. And I like when they do that sometimes. As long as, like I said, as long as it's not a very exclusive doll, you know, I'm okay with it. Um, but I'm okay because I know that going in. I don't like when people keep reinventing the same doll. Um, because to me, it takes down the value. You know, your doll is not as unique. The more and more that they duplicate it, the more and more, the, the less and less your doll is valued at. Um, if there's a trillion out there, nobody cares. They can get that one. So if you ever need to sell, the value of your doll just went down because now you no longer have something that's rare and unique that people need to buy from you. You know, they can go somewhere else and get it, so to, so to speak, if that makes sense. Um, another thing that it makes me question, too, is like, why... Why keep making the same doll anyway? Like, I thought it would be more fun to do new faces and new things. Like, as a creator, as an artist, I thought that the creative side is the best part. You know, being able to create and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just one of those things that I was thinking about because I'm seeing more and more people doing it. You know, like we've already mentioned before, it was like a huge shock. To see that the vinyl edition of the silicone edition. A lot of people was excited to get it. But it was just a huge shock that the edition size was so large. You know. I, I don't know. Um, especially. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that a lot of people say. Well you know what. The artists have to live. That They have to make a living. And stuff like that. But I think that sometimes they should consider the collector. Because here's what happens. If we can't sell our dolls to buy new dolls, it slows down us buying new dolls. So, and I know there's rich people out there that don't have to sell to buy dolls and all that stuff. And, you know, I don't really give a crap either about that. Because they got enough money to do whatever they want. I'm, I'm speaking on the average collector like me, myself. And, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, I don't want to have to buy to sell until you get start buying dolls that cost a significant amount of money and then you're like eh you know because for me that's just what I have to do you know I you know that's what I have to do because I I don't want to like I told you guys before I I don't want to um be you know selling my cars and my houses and my real kids for them so you know, I have to sell the dolls, and that's just the way it goes. So, um, at the end of the day, that's when I realized they're not real. And if I decide to sell them, I just decide to sell them, you know. And if you feel really bad about it and don't like the fact that I'm selling them, then go ahead and buy them and rescue them. Save me! Please! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> that's what, you know, it's like, when people like, why are you? Yeah. Well, I love that baby. Buy it. <laughs> it's here's your opportunity. You can have it right there in front of your face, baby. You can have it forever. No, I understand that because I um there's a few babies that was leaving nurseries and I was like, oh my gosh. Cause you know, it's like you you get attached to them and the personality that the mommies give them, and then you're like, oh no. You know, and then sometimes the mo the new mommy is not on social media and you can't follow the baby and it's like, oh no. So I don't, I totally get that seriously though. I was just being silly. But um, I'm trying guys, I'm trying to hold on to my babies. But yeah, that was just a thought. It's like, <clears throat> what was the, the, the point of the topic of the video? I really need some memory pills or something. What was I saying? 
Oh, how do you feel about large editions and people um, redoing the edition sizes and stuff like that? And, you know, I know like some people was upset about the, um, the, what is that baby? The, I forget the name of the baby by Natalie Show. She had the sleeper that was very popular years ago and then she came out with the weight just recently and people were like, why did she do that? You know, and then some people were like, yes. So, you know, everybody have their different things, but I just wonder like, for me, this is my opinion on, um, for me, I like my babies to be rare. I don't mind sharing the same doll as my collector friends. I don't mind sharing the same doll with, you know, other people. I just don't want to have something that's like store-bought item. Because when you think about it, if you keep going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it's almost like walking into Walmart getting a doll that's like factory made that almost anybody and everybody has. I mean, it, of course it's not on that scale, but in this doll world, because it's not, you know, we're just a small percentage of the world here, okay? And so when you do addition sizes that's so large or multiple, you keep doing, like there's one artist or sculptor, um, I, I liked one of her babies, the way she tweaked the face here recently, but I, I declined on buying it because it's like you've been making the same face since I came into this community. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, I don't get it. But the collectors love it. And the, there are collectors that are just going crazy over this same face. And I'm like, guys, it's the same freaking doll that you bought last year. It's the same doll that you bought three months ago. In fact, you put out five of the same doll at the same time and everybody's still going cuckoo bananas. I don't get it. But anyway, nevertheless, you know, that I guess that's the thing. Think about it. I guess we're just all different and we like all different things. I keep going back to that same thing, you know? And I just did a whole video on this and now I'm just thinking to myself, it just goes back to the same thing. It's not for me. Let it go. Move on. And I have. And I do. So I don't buy it. But I'm just wondering what you think. Because I know what I think. I think that I want something rare. I want something that's limited. And let's talk about size of a limited edition of Reborns. Back in the day, a limited edition would be about, he's so sweet. I, I, Y'all have no idea how much I love this one. I love, he is my favorite because the way he's weighted, and I keep telling you guys that, and that he's always looking. He's always looking. Um, but, um, Back in the day, a limited edition kit would be like a size of 250 or 500 at most. That was a huge addition if it went to 500, and 500 or 550. Never, like, I don't think it was like a thousand and so and so, so on and so forth. I think when Laura Lee Eagles did Everlay, people got so upset because they didn't get it. And it was another one before that. Was it Lincoln that she had that people got really upset about? Anyway. I remember the Everlay, they like wrote her nasty messages and everything because they didn't get that kit. So after that, she did a bigger edition. But I like like the Knox. I have a Knox. I paid double the price of what that kit originally cost just to get that Knox because the Knox was supposedly not a popular um, sculpt and all of a sudden it became really popular and it sold out. And you can't find Knox kits like that and people don't sell them that often. So I have my knocks. I'm waiting to paint it specially for myself. But I paid double the price. Um, Mary Ann by Natalie Blick and Larry by Natalie Blick. If I could get my hands on those. If guys, if you got one, can you send me one, please? Thank you. Um, but those, I would love to have those. See, now it's like you want a such and such doll? Okay, I'll get it next month. Maybe, okay, well, I don't have the money. I'll just wait. You know, I'm not trying to stress for it because the addition size is just a million and they're not going to sell out no time soon or it's an open edition or there's going to be a second edition and all I have to do is wait two more weeks. You know, it's like, I don't know, it kind of not as fun to collect those, if that makes sense. So, um, 
anyway guys that's just my thought on it I you know there are sculptors like I said before I will support no matter what they do um, as far as addition size as long as I love the sculpt that they put out um, Bonnie Brown is one of them um, it doesn't matter to me if she does open edition second edition stars third editions I love her sculpting so if it's a sculpt that I'm really truly in love with I'm gonna buy it anyway um, so I'm not saying this to discourage people from buying from the sculptors that they love. I'm just saying that for me, if I have to choose between a pre-order of a true limited edition kit from a sculptor that normally don't, you know, go back and backtrack and extend their edition, I would buy that one over one that I know that's going to keep making the same baby over and over again or that they're going to have a large edition. Um, there is, you know, with the silicone babies, same thing. If if you're going to keep remaking the same dolls and all of a sudden I think I got a sold out baby and now you're going to do a whole new edition of it, I don't want to buy your work no more. It, it's, it's not, no, it's not cool. You know, it's one thing to wake a baby up or, you know, have a, a wake and a sleep or, you know, um... But, yeah, to to just keep redoing the same same dollar all of a sudden after, you know, everybody bought what they thought was limited, you know, or addition of so-and-so amount. And then you, you know, I remember one sculptor said the edition was sold out and every time you turn around, they had a new doll up for sale of that same edition for years. Almost two years later, they were still selling those same dolls and... I think it turned off a lot of her customers and um, she struggled today to sell her dolls but you know you do it to yourself because collectors like in rare form for what I think as a whole some people just don't care but let me know what you guys think in the comment section I'm just curious to know what you guys think because you know your, your perspectives change you know they really do because at one point I didn't want a silicone baby that was in a vinyl um that was in you know that was in vinyl as well but that changed and now I love the idea I love to be able to to paint the vinyl and you know or have a vinyl that's less expensive or have the opportunity if I can't afford the the silicone I can afford the vinyl type thing so I like that my perspective changed on it so Maybe I'll hear you guys' thoughts and maybe I may change the way I think too. Who knows? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, join the chatterbox. That's what you can do. Since you don't want to get your merch, join the chatterbox. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, yeah, his name is Hunter. He's not Dwayne, he's Hunter. He is Dwayne by Claire Teller, but he's Hunter. Hunter. Remember that.